We have finally arrived after four years in this beautiful piece of paradise here in Cambodia, Koh Ta Kiev Island, probably the least visited island in the whole of Cambodia. And to be honest, I see why. Koh Ta Kiev is a remote island in Cambodia that has no transport or roads, limited Wi-Fi and electricity, and hardly any people living there. Unlike islands nearby like Koh Rong and Koh Rong Samlom, it's still very wild and undeveloped. In fact, most tourists we've met have never even heard of this island. So we're really excited to bring you along with us in this video and show you this beautiful place. So we just came to this very legendary place with a very legendary hostel that used to be back in the days. I say it used to be because it's not here anymore. It's called The Last Point. Oh man, there's so many things happen in this Last Point place. In fact, we were camping here about four years ago, just right there where the tree's at. Like a little swing still here. And this is like the very legendary bar that used to have uh, this thing called Kalang Thery, which at every single day at three o'clock, or 3.30 or something like that. You buy one beer and you can drink as many as you want, as many as you can in 30 minutes. And if you fail, you have to pay. When I say fail, means you throw up. <laughs> there used to be funny times out here. People used to make a little bunch of bars, just like a massive bar out here. Uh, Quite sad now, all destroyed. It's pretty sad to see it's gone, but they're rebuilding something. There's workers over there. But yeah, this is pretty much it. The good old last point place is gone. Damn, son. But obviously the main thing is left here, which is the beach, the white beach. And it is really nice to walk along the beach. It is actually way bigger than it looks. And the feeling when you walk along it is just like you're in a deserted island or something like that. Obviously there are a little bit of trash because it keeps washing off, you know, onto the shore. But that's just normal with any deserted islands like that. It is what it is. Yeah, I remember you used to be able to um, pick up a whole bag of trash and get a beer for free in exchange. They used to do that here, so it used to stay relatively clean, but obviously there's no one staying or living here anymore, so yeah. it's not being cleaned up. And actually a lot of the guest houses in Koh Kiev Island have closed down in the past couple of years. There used to be five here on the island and now there's only two left, so a lot has changed. So this is our little hut where we're staying. I'm just gonna walk in now, show you guys. It is a little bit messy, so don't be mad at us. <laughs> but I have a sleep with like a mosquito net. And there's like a little balcony kind of thing, like a bar. Me and Olivia just like chill here, have a beer, play some cards at night. This goes up. Yeah, pretty cool. So you can see the view. And yeah, it has everything you need. It has a lamp. And the best part is, like which is very, very rare in Kota Kiev Island, USB charge. The place we are staying at right now is called Cactus and it's one of the two places that's left on the island where you can actually stay. They have accommodation here for backpackers for only $4 a night in a dorm room which is pretty affordable for an island. And the price goes all the way up if you want in something a bit more fancier like a private sea view room right by the beach. They also have yoga every morning, a gym, happy menus and some amazing food as well. To be honest, I think the meals we've had at this place are genuinely some of the best we've had in Cambodia so far. So that's saying something. Overall, Cactus has a lot to offer here on this island. There's probably something for everyone and we're going to put a link in the description below to Cactus's website because it's really an amazing place to stay if you want to get off the beaten path and just chill in the wild for a bit. So now we're on Cactus Beach, in other words, the Plankton Beach. This beach is called the Plankton Beach because you can swim with the plankton at night. Can you imagine this, guys? Cactus is actually all the way across this beach on the other side. And all of this beach is there and there is absolutely no people in here. I mean, look at this beautiful beach. And the cool thing is that there's many beaches like that here on this island. So let's go and explore more because this island is pretty damn big. There's only like one path and it's jungle. Basically guys, there's no roads, there's no lamps, nothing. And the coolest part is that you kind of feel like you're in a jungle, you know, like a deserted island kind of vibe. And if you go to another side of the island and you stay there past the sunset, that means that you have to walk through the jungle with a phone torch, possibly alone 
for like half an hour or something Maybe like that. Not even with a phone torch. I know. Don't forget your phone. Yeah, don't forget your phone or, or bring a torch. <laughs> but yeah, that's the whole magic about this island is that it's not developed. It, there's no development. There's plans for development. So that's why you should come and check this island out before it gets fully destroyed by the big corporations. To be honest, guys, there's nothing like a jungle walk in the morning. With all the birds singing and stuff like that. It's proper relaxing. This island is actually home to some like rare bird species as well. So you might actually see some of those. We saw some the other day with the big horns. Like a, it looks like a hornbill, but also like a stork. They're really I know. Cool. They just fly overhead. I have never seen birds like that anywhere else. Crossroads. Right. Got this this way where we came from. All the way straight takes to the 103. Grandfather's bad case on Rocky Beach. Just see what it is. Nothing but nature sounds. So after a good 10-15 minutes there's another sign. Rocky Beach. Last point. I always get a bit nervous when I haven't seen a sign for a while. I always wonder if we're still going the right way but it's all good. So there's another crossroad but except there's no signs this time. One goes all the way there. Clear path and then there's another clear path this way. It's clearly a path, right? No idea where it's gonna take us, but I think we'll just try this one, Olivia. Yeah. See what happens. Have little obstacles. It's a bit overgrown the path. There's this huge tree right here. And there's a sign. It's upside down though. Whoa. What does it say exactly? In case of tsunami, take LSD plus climb this tree. I don't know how else I'll climb that tree. <laughs> it's a big ass tree. You need a lot of acid for it. <laughs> We're just next to this cliff right here. And apparently you have to climb all the way down. There's like a rope and everything. It's pretty damn steep. And to be honest, there's also like the main path. But we sort of wanted to explore the island a little bit. So we wanted to go like a little bit around. Well, this probably would have been much easier the other way, but hey, we're all here for the adventure. I'm not dressed for this. So we have our first test rabbit here. About to try out the trail. Be careful, eh? Don't worry about me, I'm a ninja. Yeah, I'm worried that you might slip on these leaves and this, you fall into this ditch over there. Don't go through that right side. Don't go through there. Watch out. Web, no, 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 no. You, you slide to the right hand side, you break your neck. Rope's pretty new, so that's quite nice. I mean, like this whole tree is this is underneath. It's hollow. This path feels definitely abandoned. It looks very overgrown, not met well maintained, and I don't think people really goes here anymore. But uh, it's still some sort of a path. You can still walk it. You can still see it. You're safe. There's no snakes. Thanks. Finally, can hear the ocean. You can even see the ocean, well, the sea, Gulf of Thailand. But here we are at the rocky beach, supposedly. This is the rocky beach. Oh, it's all submerged and absolutely covered in rubbish that washes off every single day from the mainland. Wow. What do you think, Olivia? Really submerged, right? And covered in plastic. There's not much happening on the rocky beach. Just realized that there's actually quite a lot of food in here, like little fish and little crabs, like this one right here. Look at it, he's about to. Oy. Look at this crab, he's about to attack it. Hey, there are food here. In case of a survival situation, it's always good to know. So, after trekking for ages to the path that we used to know four years ago, uh, we got absolutely covered in thorns and we thought like oh, we'll push a little bit more a little bit more to the point where literally we got covered in bruises and spikes and i mean we we're just bleeding i mean look at this both of us like covered in blood so yeah this was not the best path and now we on the way back we just saw sea garden that's where the sea garden is so we were supposed to turn this way yes not go that way no we went this way and we were like, yeah, look at this, last point and this. We didn't even look this way. We just like, idiots. Right, let's go. What happened, Olivia? Oh no, my head's stuck in a branch. Can you help me? Hi, hi, hi. There we go. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Guys, 
just take the main KTK path. Don't do what we're doing, because nature is brutal. It's not as nice as the sandy beaches. Just arrived to the Sea Garden Hostel or Resort that used to be called back in the days, and now it's just a whole lot of trash and just like abandoned ruins of it, just some leftovers. As you can see a bunch of bungalows completely destroyed by the storms. The entrance to the beach is as any other deserted beach covered in plastic, but that's just to do with the global problem. And then you come to this bit and it looks freaking amazing, guys. So we're gonna go all the way there to the long beach, wash all the thorns. Man, back in the days it was completely different. And now coming back to this and seeing this literally ruins, it kind of is quite sad to be honest, quite heartbreaking. I can't believe that that happened in like three years, four years. It looks like it's been here for like 50 years. Yeah, so forever. We went to the future and this is what is yeah. done. Since all the paths are overgrown, we're gonna go through the water this time. Because okay. it's quite nice out here. Look at these nice little beaches here as well, like little tiny private beach, absolutely covered in plastic. It is really sad that, you know, we have experienced Kota Kiev when it was fully like in its best, you know, like all cleaned up, loads of people, bunch of hostels opened up, everybody's cleaning everything around. It looked a completely different vibe, you know, in here, but it, it has changed and I'm really worried that it's never going to be the same. It's going to be kind of like this or it's going to be like fully like resort, expensive resort vibe with like bunch of roads and shopping malls. And it's not gonna be this like deserted island vibe kind of anymore. Yeah, Disneyfied. Another hostel fully destroyed. Look how big it was. They had like a whole like wall in there, like full on house. And it's not a thing anymore. Like generally so, so sad. It feels like it was a war zone in here. Let's see what's in here, what's left. It is probably pretty dodgy going here. So probably try, need to try not to touch anything in case something falls on you. They had it all like, with bricks like cemented and everything and there's like a basement look at this fully like still intact could probably be rebuilt but yeah it would take you cost you a lot of money to do that and the, all the cleaning up as well and look there's like toilets used to be there and that's the thing with like these little like bamboo looking things all the little straws, this roof's made out of straws, they don't last very long. One season gone, if not less. So you constantly need to like remake them and stuff like that. So probably if you're gonna do something like that, like build a hostel or something on this island, you probably need to make sure it's gonna be relatively durable because look what happens if you don't look after it for a couple of years. Hey up. Hey up. What do you think of this place? Sad. Sad, right? Yeah. So many good memories like flashing through my head when I come to this place. My time in Kota Kiev was probably one of the happiest times of my life. So seeing it like this is kind of sad. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to Kota Kiev. If you have, drop a comment below what do you think about the current situation here. And what was it like when you came? Maybe it was different, better yeah. or worse. But actually, we'd love to know that, so please, yeah. down below. So we are arriving to the Long Beach right now, but we are a little bit unlucky today because there's a few boat tours. Look at that, there's like a few of them right there, chilling. So I think these tours coming all the way from like Sihanakwil or something, or Otros mm -hmm. Beach. Yeah, they don't usually come here. I mean, we came here to this beach the other day and it was completely empty the whole day. We had it all to ourselves and it was amazing. So I guess it's the time of day you come maybe, or just the day of the week. Mm. But apparently this beach is called the Long Beach for a reason. I'm sure you can understand why it's called Long Beach. Because it's pretty damn big. These beaches out here, they don't look as big on the GoPro. But to walk all this takes like 15-20 minutes probably. So it takes quite a little while because these beaches are pretty big. Uh, but we are heading actually towards Crusoe, which is uh, the only second open hostel in the whole of the island. Damn, this beach is really long. Like, it goes all the way there. That's where the Sea Garden was, somewhere there. So we walked all the way and now we're about to arrive to, I think it's called Crusoe. So see how good it is. See if anyone's friendly in there. See if they have a drink because I need one. Yeah, there's a free tent, a few people staying in there as well. And uh, the prices is quite similar to Cactus, but you sort of like stay in a tent. It's pretty cool, especially I think if you like fishing, it's like a fishing little spot out here. 
last time. Yeah. The memory is coming back. We used to walk past it here quite a few times back in the days. So yeah, they, they kept up. I see it. drinks over there. Let's go get one. Finally, getting a little drink. Oliva's moved from beer to shakes. Yeah, I need something <laughs> with more uh, sugar to walk back. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, to be honest, uh, we're not gonna go through the same route. We're gonna go through a nice little jungle. It's gonna, probably gonna take like half an hour to 40 minutes. 40 minutes, I'd say, to an hour maybe. We're gonna stick to the main trail this time. So if you keep trekking through the jungle to the northern part of the island, you're gonna get to this beautiful elephant rock. We actually visited the elephant rock about like three or four years ago. And to be honest, it was pretty damn scary. I mean, have a look. It took a bit of nerve for Olivia to jump off that cliff, but she did it and she said she's she's kind of hurt her bum and she doesn't want to do it again. So we're just kind of going to skip it this time. But now we're heading back to Cactus for sunset because this place really has like some next level sunsets. And to be honest, it is a vibe that you totally have to come and experience for yourself. I mean, have a look. <laughs> So throughout this whole video we've been exploring the island and just observing all its beauty but we haven't swam a single time I mean, we have been, but not on the camera. We just thought we'll, we'll film this as well. We actually have been swimming every single day, all day long. First thing in the morning, all the way till the evening. I mean, we can't have an island video and not show a swimming clip. It's kind of like mandatory. So here's the swimming clip. <laughs> Wait, wow. that's some lame ass swimming. Come on, we need some, <laughs> some real swimming here. Yeah, that's better. But yeah, the water is so clean here. And there's genuinely nothing better than waking up on Kotakiev Island and going for a morning swim. It's just, I mean, look around. 100%. Beautiful. It's so nice to be back here, but to be honest, the island is changing a little bit. There are some ruthless plans for this beautiful deserted island, which is building massive resorts on the main beach, on the Long Beach, I think. Yeah, we talked to the staff here at Cactus and they said, it's going to happen no matter what, yeah. Inev it's inevitable in a maybe three years or so. This island's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same wild yeah. escape that it is right now. Yeah. So if you want to experience something like this, you better hurry up before it gets fully destroyed. Like most of the beautiful places nowadays, you've probably seen a lot of development happening everywhere. That's just how it is, you know, everything yeah. is developing so fast and there's only so much we can do, but simply just enjoy, take a deep breath and be here in this beautiful beach. But unfortunately, we can't enjoy it for much longer because we're leaving today. Yes. We only have a month in Cambodia, so we kind of need to crack on. We could easily spend the whole month on this island. But... Too easy, yeah. yeah. We've been here for literally like, what, five, six days now? Yeah. And it's definitely time to go. It's definitely time to hit the road. Our motorbike is waiting out there on the mainland. We're so like missing our bike and a good old adventure. So this is going to be pretty damn cool. I actually can't wait to get back on it. Yeah, I'm surprised I'm actually excited to get back to the mainland. <laughs> let's do it. Let's go on an yeah. adventure. So yeah, buckle up, keep it locked and loaded for the next Travels and Toast videos because the adventure's only just starting. Mm -hmm. 